Landlocked countries have no coastlines, no naval bases along the sea, and seemingly no business operating submarines. Yet in recent years, a number of such nations have shown growing interest in undersea warfare. From Central Europe to Central Asia, landlocked militaries are investing in submarine programs, some through acquisitions, others through training, research, or industrial partnerships. So, in today's video, we're exploring the surprising rise of submarine-related activity in landlocked countries and what it says about the evolving nature of modern naval power. Let's start with the most basic question. Why would a country without a coastline want a submarine? The answer lies in geopolitics, industrial ambition, and the future of warfare. Some of the most interesting cases don't involve countries building navies from scratch, but rather integrating themselves into the undersea domain through technology, alliances, and unmanned platforms. While they may not operate nuclear subs or diesel electric attack boats, several landlocked countries are building up naval adjacent capabilities. Take Kazakhstan. Although it operates patrol boats and a small navy on the Caspian Sea, it remains a landlocked nation, cut off from global maritime routes. Its navy is confined to an inland sea, and yet Kazakhstan has shown interest in expanding underwater warfare training and supporting joint maritime security with Russia and other Caspian neighbors. This makes it a relevant example a landlocked state with real regional naval ambition despite its lack of access to the open ocean. Elsewhere, countries like Serbia and Mongolia don't operate navies at all, but have participated in training exchanges focused on maritime operations. Serbia, for instance, has worked with Russian and Chinese defense firms on naval systems, while Mongolia has included naval officer courses in broader military cooperation frameworks with Russia. Even Switzerland and Austria, nations with no serious military maritime presence, have contributed to underwater system development. They've hosted submarine simulators, researched underwater robotics, and provided logistic support for Allied navies during exercises. For many landlocked nations, undersea warfare is less about deploying submarines and more about integrating into global defense supply chains. Switzerland, for instance, has no navy, but Swiss defense companies produce sonar components, power systems, and electronic control units used in European-built submarines. These niche contributions enable landlocked countries to play a vital role in the underwater domain without ever launching a vessel. In Central Europe, Czech and Slovak defense firms have provided mechanical parts and software for NATO naval platforms, including submersible drones, this industrial integration gives these countries a seat at the table in multilateral procurement programs and increases their diplomatic leverage within military alliances. Another economic driver is research and development. Countries like Austria and Hungary have hosted academic projects focused on underwater robotics and environmental monitoring, technologies that are now being repurposed for dual use in surveillance and reconnaissance unmanned underwater vehicles of UUVs. By advancing these technologies, landlocked nations can contribute to global military innovation without maintaining a navy. Perhaps the biggest enabler of this trend is the evolution of small, modular, uncrewed underwater vehicles. These platforms require no crew, minimal logistical support, and can be operated from lakes, rivers, or coastal allies' bases. Israel's Blue Whale, the U.S. Navy's Remus series, and China's HSU-001 are examples of UUVs now available to smaller or non-coastal militaries. In theory, a country could operate these systems out of nearby friendly ports, or even use them for domestic purposes like infrastructure inspection or hydrological mapping while maintaining their military utility. As these technologies get cheaper and more autonomous, they're becoming viable options for countries previously excluded from undersea warfare. 
beyond capability development, the geopolitical motivations are just as strong. Within NATO, landlocked members are expected to contribute to collective defense, including maritime scenarios, training personnel in underwater warfare, investing in sonar and communications tech, or supporting submarine logistics, are all ways these countries fulfill alliance obligations. For example, Hungary and Slovakia have contributed to NATO naval exercises by providing logistics and command and control personnel. These actions help improve interoperability with allies like Italy or France, who do operate blue water fleets. On the other side, countries like Ethiopia and Rwanda, while not NATO members, have demonstrated interest in port security, anti-piracy missions, and underwater surveillance through bilateral cooperation with regional powers. Their strategic interest lies in safeguarding trade routes and maritime choke points that affect their economic access. While no one expects a landlocked country to commission a nuclear-powered submarine anytime soon, the line between naval and non-naval powers is becoming increasingly blurred. Emerging platforms like underwater drones, AI-enabled swarm systems, and containerized submarine modules mean that undersea warfare is no longer the exclusive domain of coastal giants. Moreover, future conflicts may prioritize underwater networks of sensors and drones more than traditional submarine patrols. This shift opens the door for landlocked nations to become meaningful players in maritime security, not by geography, but by design. While the idea of landlocked nations engaging in undersea warfare might seem unusual, it's already happening in practical and strategic ways. Some landlocked countries are now involved in undersea warfare not by fielding submarines, but by supplying critical components, training with naval allies, or deploying uncrewed underwater systems from friendly ports. What's your take on this trend? Let us know in the comments below. And if you found this video insightful, Give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for the latest defense news and analyses.